chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. Today we're going to react to a recent video featuring Chris Bumstead. At the current point, four-time Mr. Olympia will probably win this coming year and the next and the next and until he decides to retire. He's that genetically superior to everybody else. In this video, he talks about his top 10 exercises if he had to pick only 10 for overall muscle growth. I have seen Chris say that he uses a bro split style of training himself. I'm a huge believer in like the good old bro split type workouts where you just destroy one body part, train at full intensity on that day. Other, every other style of workout works as well. I just like that style. A lot of pro bodybuilders, almost all of them from what it seems like, they still rock with that style. I wouldn't recommend that most of you watching do that. I don't think one time a week frequency really brings any benefits to the table over two times a week. That said, it can work, and there is going to be exercise overlap too on a bro split, so you still can get that frequency, albeit at a lesser level, I think, than a well-designed split that has you hit the same amount of volume just split up two times a week. And before we jump into this, guys, comment down below, what do you think he's going to say? Is he going to list a lot of the modern, trendy, so-called optimal exercises that are so popular online? Is he going to go with more old-school style is it going to be a mixture? But as Chris would say, let's get into this. If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of time, yeah. that's all you have in your library to stay as muscular as possible, give me the list. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to have to count it on my hands. Um, squats. Why? This guy's staring a hole through him, dude. Holy shit. Just overall leg growth. They help glutes, quads, like a large portion of the leg that will really squat. Okay, so right off the bat, we're starting with the one that most guys are going to skip for some period of their training, or in some guys' cases, they will skip it for their entire training career. The optimal bros are upset, and the old school coaches are high-fiving each other. If it's my whole life, I might actually do Smith Machine squats. Okay, scratch that. Now the old school coaches are not happy. Because it'll help my knees in a little bit, be a little bit easier. Okay, Plus okay. stability, and people hate me for that, but I love squatting in the Smith Machine. So I find that interesting. He says he'd favor a Smith Machine squat if he had to pick between between that or a barbell. His reasoning, though, is to be better on his knees. That's unique because a lot of people have said in the past that Smith Machine squats are bad for your knees because the weight doesn't have free ways to move back and forth. It's fixed in the hydraulic system of the Smith Machine. I get what he's saying, though, because if you're on a Smith Machine, you can adjust your stance such that you're more upright. I totally get his point here, though. When it comes to barbell back squats, they can get pretty fatiguing the more strong you are at them. I don't know if Chris Bumstead ever maxes out or lifts low reps on squats. I would assume he could easily squat at least 595 over 600 pounds. And unlike a lot of bodybuilders too, Chris is not short. He is six foot one, if I'm not mistaken. So for a lot of guys too, you're going to be able to squat really deep on the Smith machine without worrying about butt wink and low back rounding. I get a lot of shit for that. Mm. Um, deadlifts, okay. just to get something that'll target the my hamstrings. And so I don't have to take out another 10 of two, something too hamstring focused and glute and back focused. The most aesthetic man on earth, Mr. Classic Physique Olympia, has chosen two of three powerlifting exercises, guys, as his top two. Now, I know the hypertrophy cells and the optimal... Are you kidding me? These aren't optimal for hypertrophy. I try to tell you guys here all the time, man. The whole size and strength dichotomy is not as serious as people make it out to be on the internet. The bigger you are, the more strength potential you have, and vice versa. And ultimately, to grow muscle, you still need to get stronger in any rep range that you choose. Now, in terms of powerlifting training, one rep max strength, there is some dichotomy there. That said, though, if you guys think that the average pro bodybuilder, as big as they are, if they did not adjust their training to do peaking, if you want to call it that, for powerlifting, if you think they're not going to be very strong, you're solely mistaken. A lot of these IFBB pros guys, they can rep out 315 on the bench for 12 to 15 reps. They're going to have a one rep max in the mid 400 pounds, if not upwards of 500. And you can see on the screen here, this is an older clip of Chris Bumstead deadlifting. This is 675 pounds, and he is moving this relatively easily. So once again, man, this entire dichotomy, and people call powerlifting coping, it's like, oh, well, you should really want to train to look better and power copers and all this other stuff. You guys need to get attached to reality, bro. The biggest and the strongest people overlap in the vast majority of cases. You're always going to find one or two rare outliers. The biggest people are the strongest people and vice versa. You see a lot of these power lifters, man. 
if they finally do lean out and they compete in bodybuilding, a lot of them end up doing so, they will smoke the competition because they have so much muscle, like he just said, in the legs, in the back, their posterior chain. The power lifters you see in the gym guys who take forever and their sets are very boring, they have more muscle on their body than your favorite aesthetic bras. Now, one thing I noticed, he didn't specify any certain type of deadlift. He just said deadlift. I guess for the purposes of this video, we can assume he means conventional. I will say if you're talking about pure muscle growth, I think a Romanian or stiff-legged deadlift would be better suited just because those involve a controlled eccentric component. The control negative is going to net you more muscle growth on a rep per rep basis. But even so, you still will build muscle from conventional deadlifts. I guess not sumo because that is cheating. Um, pull-ups. Well, would you look at that, guys? We are three exercises in and this guy is filling in the template for starting strength. So I can hit my back and biceps in one. Overhand, underhand? Neutral. I like that answer. Oh, neutral grip. Neutral probably, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit more Latin biceps. Yep. Yeah. Make sure my arms are going. I can definitely rock with that too. The neutral grip pull-up, I'd say for most people compared to the typical pronated or supinated, which supinated pull-ups are just chin-ups, in case you don't know, underhand. But the neutral grip for most people is going to be the easiest on the shoulders if you have issues with that. And you're going to get a good mix, like he said, of back and bicep at the same time. That's a very common misconception people have too. Like, oh, these stupid juice heads don't know anything about training. Some of them don't, to be fair, but a lot of these guys now, man, at least now compared to previous years and decades, they are far more educated. Um, incline dumbbell press. Uh-huh. I find inclines a little bit better on your shoulders, so if yeah. you're doing it's the only exercise you can do, you won't fuck up your shoulders as much. Another classic exercise there, incline dumbbell bench. This is something a lot of the old school programs don't have in them at all. There's basically no incline work of any type. And dumbbell. It'll just keep you a little bit more symmetrical. He does make the point, though, that if you're using dumbbells, it's going to help a little bit more on an imbalance basis. I don't think it's going to be a massive difference. But if you're somebody that does have imbalances, which, like I always say, guys, record your form so you know this. You cannot look in the mirror and stuff and get a good, genuine look at how your form is. But if you're somebody that records your set and the bar is, like, tilting down to one side significantly or it's really shifting, using dumbbells for at least a period of time is going to help you better identify and work on such imbalances. Dumbbell shoulder press. Uh-huh. Seated? Seated. Yep. Dumbbell shoulder press. Yeah, I think that'll help your triceps and shoulders a lot. All right, so now we go from an inclined dumbbell press to a seated dumbbell overhead press. Understandable. Very good front and delt especially exercise. One of the good things about dumbbells too, guys, you have a lot of movement freedom with those which is why they are easier on a lot of people's shoulders. In all my years in the gym, both as just a patron and even a trainer in the gym, this is probably the most asked for a spot exercise, even more so than the bench press. Getting heavy dumbbells up into position, kicking them up, even if you get a lot of momentum, it's just very taxing, it's very difficult. Sometimes you get them up on one side, then the other side kind of lags behind. You expend a lot of energy even prior to starting the set, just getting them into position. So if you're somebody that trains alone primarily, I would not go for very heavy reps on dumbbell shoulder press. Uh, a close grip flat bench. Different part of the chest and triceps. So we started from the posterior chain and have gone to the anterior. We did the inclined dumbbell press, seated dumbbell overhead press, and now the flat bench press close grip. And would you look at that, guys? We have gotten the three power lifts or some variation of the three power lifts in the top 10 exercises of the Mr. Olympia Classic Physique. Dumbbell curl. That's a given for the bros. Just something Fuck, specific. Brilliant. I'm just, so glad that was in there. How do you want to live without doing fucking <laughs> okay, dumbbell yeah, curls? It doesn't even for help your physique. Your life, I just you know? need it for my mindset. Exactly, yeah. With that, are you uh, supinated? You, again, this is the only one that you're going to get. Are you seated? Are you standing? It. Standing, supinated. Okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah. The, go, the, the, the OG of dumbbell curls. Just the OG, yeah. Yeah, and it's got to be one arm at a time. It can't yeah. be both arms together. It's got to be one arm one at a time. One at a time, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, six is the basics. So he said he favors a standing curl. You could also do something like an incline curl or a seated curl. Any sort of direct bicep exercise is just curling. There's nothing more complicated than that. The only critique you could possibly make there would be if you want to get the maximum muscle growth outcome without anything else interfering. Maybe having your elbows rest on something while you do it. I've been doing curls myself, guys. You can like sit on the ground and basically put your elbows against your inner thighs and you can do cable curls that way. Preacher curls are good for this too to limit really any sway, but you're not going to really miss out on much growth with the standing dumbbell curl, assuming your form is not 
cheating that much. You can also even do cheat curls if you really want to. Those will grow your biceps. One thing I noticed, he did say that you're going to alternate one side at a time. I've never understood that about a lot of bodybuilders. I don't see a point in doing like the left, then the right, then the left, then the right. You're really going to end up saving time by doing them both sides at a time. And for the love of God, guys, please do not do something stupid like the concentration curl. And you think that staring at your bicep and talking nice to it is going to somehow make it grow more? Did I say bent over row? No. Bent over row. Okay. It'll, that'll help like stability, like core as well. Uh-huh. And then like lower back and obviously upper back. This is what I'm talking about, dude. The bent over row is very unique because on one end, I'm in this camp. I respect it very much. I think it's basically mandatory for beginners to learn. Even if you do a one-arm dumbbell row or something, just a heavy free weight row is good to do. You can do it bent over, pen lay style off the ground, whatever. There's people on the internet though that pretend this exercise just doesn't do anything for your back. You ever see those TikToks? It'll be like, my back stopped growing when I stopped doing this. And they're doing these rows and it's like, bro, if you cannot grow, not only just the traps, also your lats too. The bent over row hits the entire back. I'd say it's a more upper back biased. But if you can't grow your back muscles doing a bent over row, your form is shit. Yeah, because the only back exercise that you've had so far is the pull-up. Deadlifts and pull-ups. Yeah. I like how the host didn't realize that deadlifts were also a back exercise, even if isometrically. Those are going to work your back too. But those are very basic, guys. A pull-up and a bent over row. I mean, that is as old school simplistic as you can get in terms of growing your back. I would argue, guys... Those are all you really need for maximum back development. Now, of course, you can adjust the volume and stuff and do variations the more experience that you get. But you'll notice he didn't say the iliac fiber pull down or bringing a bench over to the cable station to do the one arm row. And those aren't even necessarily bad exercises. But you see so many guys now and they just preach all this science based allegedly stuff for the back. Most guys with the biggest backs, they don't do any of these fancy things or they just throw them in at the very end. They built their base and the vast majority of their muscle mass doing the basics. So I got two left. Yeah. Probably like a hanging leg raise just to make sure your core is getting hit. I always try and work on my lower abs mm -hmm. because it's harder for me to contract those rather than upper. And that's usually when your stomach hangs out. And on bodybuilding stage, you don't want your like gut hanging out essentially. All right. So we have one direct ab exercise. He picked the hanging leg raise. In terms of core exercises, or I guess I should say abs because core is more encompassing than just the center abs in the front, but a hanging leg raise is fine. The ab wheel is fine. The decline sit-up is fine. The cable crunch. The ab training, guys, as long as you're doing something and overloading it in some way, you don't really need to overthink it. There's a lot of cool ab exercises you see online and a lot of people that are like, oh, you can get abs in 22 days or you see all these circuits online that promise all these crazy results. You're not going to get a six-pack just by doing ab exercises. If you think that's the case, you're sorely mistaken. Check the video in the top corner for a full breakdown of how to actually get visible abs. And also like hanging from a bar is really good for your shoulders and spine. So you're kind of hitting two birds with one stone. That's a good point too. This is known as spinal decompression. Just hanging from a pull-up bar. Doesn't matter what grip you ultimately take. But especially after you do maybe like a lower body day, for example. Anything with a lot of axial loading in it. So squats, deadlifts, which he mentioned in this video already. Anything where your spine is placed under a lot of stress known as compression. Bent over rows are going to fit this as well. Standing overhead presses, good mornings, things like that. After those sessions, I think it's good. I forget to do this myself a lot too. I'm trying to get better at it. Get on a pull-up bar and just hang for 30 to 60 seconds, maybe a bit longer, but that's going to help you decompress your spine, relieve your low back a bit. You'll even see videos where people do this after not doing it for a long time. They'll gain an inch or two in height because their spine has been so compressed. And number 10. This is a tough one. Lateral raises or like an overhead tricep extension? So he can't even decide, but it comes down to a lateral raise or a tricep extension. Both isolation style exercises. Both muscles that guys are always trying to focus on. I haven't had a lot of like specific oh. triceps. I would probably do lateral raises just to get some meaty delts over. So he says if he had to pick, he would do the lateral raise. Given that we're doing a close grip bench press and the seated shoulder press and the incline press, the triceps are being hit with all of those too. So I guess if you had to pick number 10 for this slot, it's going to come down to what is more important for your physique. But there you have it. So let's recap the top 10. Back squat, Smith Machine preferred. Deadlift, he didn't specify a type, let's assume conventional. Neutral grip pull-ups, incline dumbbell press, dumbbell shoulder press, sitting. 
close grip flat bench, standing dumbbell curl, bent over row, hanging leg raise, and lateral raise. So we've got every area of the body being hit here. The aesthetic muscles get some love at the end too, the abs, the biceps, the side delts. He also said you could do a tricep extension in place of the lateral raise. But the meat and potatoes of this routine is stuff that you've been seeing for years, guys. The exercise is that a lot of old school coaches who are now sort of fat and they get called D-Y-E-L on the internet by a bunch of teenage kids, SARMs goblins, the stuff they tell you to do, that's what Chris Bumstead is also telling you to do. And coincidentally, these are a lot of the exercises, well, pretty much all of them in some cases, that I include in my programs too. So if you guys are looking for a complete routine, not just exercises on a piece of paper, everything you need, a progression guide, mobility routine, exercises, sets, reps, intensity outlined for you. If you want all of that in one concise program, get yours down below, revivalfitness.org slash programs. Start making more gains with less time in the gym and get out of novice purgatory. But this has been it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Big shout out, as always, to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. If you'd like to get in direct contact with me about your own training and nutrition, you can do so down below, primarily on Patreon, and you can save some money on some great products and services as well. And I will catch you guys next time.